Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis and welcome to this video lesson. We're going to work on this uh, program that I developed in class where you're going to calculate the area of a triangle. And here's the area formula, one half base times the height, where the user enters the base, they enter the height, and then we click calculate area and then it's going to determine what the answer is. So this was something that I drew on the board in class. Let me go ahead and switch over to Visual Studio and I'll create a new project and we're going to make sure that this is a Visual Basic project. So we'll make sure that Visual Basic is selected, Windows Forms application, and then I'll just simply say um, Triangle Area Project in this case. Click OK. Give it a couple seconds. When this form opens up, we're going to open up the toolbox and we're going to drag a button, a label, and a text box to the form. Okay, so let me just give it a little bit of time here. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to hover on top of the toolbox, and then I like to click the push pin so that it stays in place. And once again, we're going to drag and drop a button, a label, and also a text box. All right, I don't need the toolbox anymore, so I'm going to minimize that. Let me switch back and forth, and it looks like um, I want a label over here that says base. So I'll just move this label over here. I'm going to title that base. I'll move a text box right next to it. Something like that. I'll take these two, copy and paste it with control C, control V, move that into place. And uh, this is going to say height. So we'll change that to height. Okay. Um, it looks like I'm bleeding a little bit over from the Le, uh, the label to the text box. So I think I'll just move this into place and then I'll make an adjustment for the top text box as well. That looks pretty good. All right, looks like I have a button over here that says calculate area. So I'll move this into place and in the text property type calculate area. And then finally, I'm going to have a label down here. I'll just take one of these labels, I'll copy and paste it. You want to make sure to change the Auto size to false, change the border style to fix 3D, and then I can position this thing. So something like this, approximately the same size as the button above. I want the text to be centered, so I'm going to go down over here to the text align property and select this guy over here where it says middle center. And then of course the text should be blank, so I'll just hit backspace and get rid of all that text. Now I can go ahead and minimize the form so that it looks something like this. Uh, let's say that I want no minimize, no maximize button, just simply the close button. And also it's supposed to say calculate triangle area. Okay, so I'll remove the maximize box, the minimize box, and we'll say calculate triangle area. All right, it's still not enough. So maybe I should say just the word calc. Let's see what that looks like. Calc. That's better. Calc triangle area. Good. Well, at this point, I need to give names to the various items on the form. So first for this text box, we're going to call that TXT base. We'll call this one TXT height. BTN calculate area. And then finally, LBL result. Okay, so now that I have the various names, let me just double check. My eyes are over here as I'm selecting the various items just to make sure that everything has an appropriate name. Looks good. I'm going to click select, or not select, save all to make sure that everything is saved. Looks like it's going to save it in the projects folder. Perfect. I'll just click save. I'm now ready to double click on the button so I can go into the code area. I don't need the properties panel, so I'm going to click this push pin. And I'll start off with the four comments. Declarations. Get user input, calculations, and then output. So this tells you what you're supposed to do from top to bottom. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to declare items. Well, I'm going to look at those things that need to be input and those items that I, I will output, and those are the variables I'll need. So I'll need a base variable, a height variable, and some sort of an output variable. Okay, so dim base as, and since it's possible that the user could enter a decimal number, I better make this thing a double. Same thing with the height, 
Same reasoning in terms of the double. And then in terms of the output, we're going to put the answer over here. So why don't I do this? Why don't I just say dim output as string? And then for strings, try to set those equal to null by setting them equal to quote, quote. All right. At this point, I can go ahead and obtain the user input. So I'll simply click over here and I'll get the base value. That, of course, has to be converted into a number. So I'll say to double. And I'm going to get that from txt. Well, it looks like it's going to be from the base. So let me double click there, dot txt. And the same thing for the height. Convert dot to double. And once again, I just type in te, uh, txt. And it's the txt height text box that I'm interested. Don't forget the, top, the dot text. All right, so I have obtained the base and the height. I'm now ready for the calculation. Well, what is it that I'm going to be calculating? Well, I'm going to be determining what the area is. I don't have a variable up here for area, so let me go back over here and create one. So I will create an area variable. So you see how it works out in programming? You put down the initial declarations that you think you need. Later on, you may discover, wow, I need some more declarations. In this case, I needed one for area. So now I can come down over here and say area is equal to 1 half times the base times the height. I've noticed some students have forgotten to put this. So it looks like this. That's going to generate an error because an error, you're basically saying 1 divided by 2 and then there's nothing over here for the base times the height. So make sure that you also put an asterisk here to indicate that everything is being multiplied times the 1 half. Well, now that I have determined the area, I can output the results. So um, let's see here. I can go ahead and do this. Uh, lbl.result.text is equal to convert dot to string and then whatever the area is. So you know what? I guess I really didn't need this output variable because I'm already doing it here. But if you wanted to use the output variable, you could do something like this. You could say um, output is uh, going to be assigned convert dot to string whatever the area variable is. And then over here, you could just simply type in output. So both ways work. You, th you want to use the step two approach or the step one approach. It's up to you. Let's go ahead and run the program. We'll give it a couple of seconds. Now that we're running in the debug mode, I'm going to go ahead and enter a value. Oops, let me switch back over here. Here we go. So let's go ahead and enter a base of six, say for example, and a height of four. Well, 6 times 4 is 24 uh, times 1 half, so the answer should be 12. Yep, there it is, 12. Let's try another one. How about 9 and 4, say, for example? So that's going to be 36. 36 divided by 2, or multiplied times 1 half is 18. Looks like it works. So I'm going to click Close, and that's it. So this is Professor Robert Solis. I hope this video lesson was helpful. Have a good day. See you next time.